All right, so for in the 1500 match, we have, hold on, I got to do the voice. I got to do the voice. We have, we have Aegis, and you chose Xavier, and Go7, who chose Von Bolt. Um, so yeah, that's the DJ's voice. Uh, he does YouTube commentary too. Check him out. He's just D E E J U S. Um, and that by us, I mean U S. So yeah, DJ's is cool. Um, he does nice stuff. And then this is fog. So DJ's is pretty good at fog. Um, very good. Some might say, and then here we have go seven, who is like the ultimate, like king of fog right now. I, there's pretty much no question. Um, there are a few players that are active right now that, um, like, I, we'll see how he does versus Master of Math. We'll see how he does if, uh, some of the older Chinese players come back, but, like, Go7 is, oh, we'll see how he does versus Zero Next as well, but, no, Go7 is, like, killing it versus literally everybody else. <laughs> like, it's not even close for the most part. So, uh, so, he, all right, so D just chose Javier, um, the map is oh, and we can talk just really quickly. So Go Seven is the highest rated player of all time at fifteen forty three or something, and then Dejus is currently like in the thirteen hundreds somewhere. Um, although I think he's been in the fourteen hundreds before. Let me just make sure I'm not spewing smoke. Uh, yeah, so he's in the thirteen hundreds right now. So so yeah, um, the map here is vandalism, which people think is a little bit cheesy and um yeah it can get a little cheesy sometimes but uh it's i think it's a cool map um i played a couple games here um yeah seems all right um so the the choices here are javier and von bolt um so von bolt in my opinion like very often a solid tier one fog pick um i haven't really been up with the new meta too much in terms of who people are choosing in tier one uh but when i played pretty religiously like a, a couple years ago um von bolt was like kind of the go-to and you have to find a reason not to choose von bolt <laughs> um here all the forests like really kind of make me think von bolt and then as for javier uh the comm towers are like actually contestable and cheesable um, so that's like a bit of a risk. And um, so we'll see how Dejus kind of thinks about Javier and Comp Towers in, in this match. Okay, so um, normal things so far. So yeah, nothing out of the ordinary. So the first major choices happened just now, uh, where Go7 decided to capture up this way, and then it looks like he's going to hop in his lander. And then here he decided to capture left instead of right. The benefit of capturing left is you get a double drop with your lander. So that is the advantage there. So for Dejus here, it looks like he also captured left from this base. But Dejus decides to capture on the outside and not double drop with his lander. So um, so here is kind of something crazy where Dejus takes his lander and like sticks it way down here. And uh, I didn't really understand what was happening for a while. Okay, so Go7 keeps here. Again, looks like he's going to bring this infantry towards the lander and drop it somewhere. Uh, builds the recon from his two base side. So D just kind of like next infantry. Second infantry goes for the airport. Third infantry goes for this nice clump of cities over here. Kind of like slow playing, you know, natural infantry progressions as if he's just like in a normal game um, trying to optimize income, which is like a reasonable thing to do. 
So actually, so Go Go Seven decides not to double drop with infantry. He he goes recon infantry drop. So here's what Go does. So he expertly avoids this lander here, although he does get into vision of it. So D just gets to see this lander go by. Um, Go Seven drops off in drops off the recon here, and then drops an infantry on the mountain. So yeah, actually, Go7 doing the same opening on the other side, uh, except for this lander drop, instead of going for the lander block Gs. So, the, so this infantry goes straight here, so you're thinking like, okay, so this comm tower belongs to Go7, and this one belongs to Degis. All right, so upper right, things proceed as normal, capturing the usual properties. Decides to be more economical short term than Go7 by going for this port capture immediately, rather than what Go did, which is drop it towards his tower. Okay, so this infantry goes straight here so that this guy here can go more towards the center. And right about now, if you're, an, you're if you're an observer in the game and you see this, you're thinking, wait a minute, hold on. So Go Seven gets to have his tower, like for free, because there's nothing nearby. And then he's also sitting on top of Dejus's tower, with a recon. Okay, so now, okay, Dejus doesn't know this, but like, if someone was, if this was not fog and you saw this, and you're Javier, the alarm bell should be ringing, like. <laughs> Like, this is a serious issue. Uh, I mean, so Javier gets his... All of his CO powers and his day-to-day -day bonus stem from him having more comp towers. Um, and if you don't get any comp towers with Javier, he's like a horrible CO. So you got to get the comp towers. But, uh, but Go7 realizes that and has uh, decided to take both of them for himself. Um, so Dejus in the meantime is keeping his lander down here, kind of hoping for another lander trap. Um, although Go7 spots it with this infantry, um, and Dejus doesn't know that. So Go7 decides to do other stuff with his lander instead of get trapped. But he thinks it's a cool idea, so he decides to trap, you know, in the meantime on the other side. So yeah, D just loads up a tank and an infantry, and oh god, trap time. So uh, that's not good, because you're delaying a turn of a tank inside of a lander that's like really not what you want to be doing with a tank. Um, it, so where it would have gone is drop the tank here, um, you know, just to like have more land presence. Or maybe down here, I'm not sure. Um but anyway, it's like D just is like has a vehicle out in C not doing anything. And he has like no other presence on the map in terms of vehicle. So we'll see what he does next. Okay, so now D just is like on his fourth or fifth infantry here. I guess that's uh his sixth infantry from this base, and no no vehicles, no mechs. Um and I think he must have just thought he was going to get this comp tower for free, or just not accounted for the fact that it could be cheesed. Because, um, like, he is just... He doesn't see it coming. Like, he doesn't know about this recon. Uh, he doesn't have vision of that area. And, um, like, he's just... He's walking into danger. So then, natural moves over there. So Go7 sees his infantry and says, oh, what if I kill it? That'd be great. And then it also gives him vision of the airport, uh, which is another great side effect of that move. Um, so it tells him if there's any B-copters that are coming. Um, he pre-builds anti-air, looks like. Uh, totally reasonable thing to do because the airport's so far away. And Go7 just kind of wants to shut this whole area down. So anti-air is like a good thing to do. And also, I mean, D just might respond B-copter immediately seeing the recon, so. 
we'll see. So, all right. So D just now sees Recon right next to his tower. So, I mean, he's got to be thinking like, oh my God, we got to do something about this. Um, so here's the, here's the drop, um, successful drop. Tank gets out, infantry gets out. Okay, so Go7 decides as a response, he's going to go for a for a mech, but um, it's just a mech. Like, there's no... He didn't have money for a mech and a B-copter. Um, I mean, it might be risky to go for B-copter immediately, knowing how wily Go7 is. So just a mech is okay, because you can go down to this area and like prevent the capture of the tower or capture it on your own. There's some good things that mechs can do in, in this region. Uh, so <clears throat> that's all right. Um, I think if he knew, actually, no, he know he knows all there is to know. There's a recon harassing a tower. He's Javier. It's under attack. It belongs to him. So it, to me, it almost warrants a tank, but, um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, well, yeah, I'll have to. Yeah, if D just watches this, maybe he can fill us in on some of the some of the details here. But I mean, I guess it's easy to say in retrospect, go for a tank. I mean, mech looks like it works, so maybe that's all there is to say about it. Um, and also, it could be that D just thinks that maybe this comm tower doesn't belong to Go7 after all. Or maybe he's just, like, silently panicking. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so second mech here seems like a reasonable thing to do. And he actually has vision now. So, so this mech sees... Well, we can't click on it. But the mech sees the tower. Um, and now the mech sees the tower being captured, which is a horrible feeling. So I guess one, one thing I noticed with Go's builds, um, he went like light vehicle, light vehicle, light vehicle, three builds in a row on the right-hand side, and then countered with Copter on the left, so he just... So he has some, at least something over there. Um, and then he goes for another sort of like double vehicle build. Uh, so it looks like, so all the vehicle money goes on the right hand side, which is kind of setting up for this uh, surprise trap. Just these lander traps all over the map. Oh, they make me laugh. Um, okay, and then D just goes for... All right, so was it... He just had 17k? I see. So he went um, artillery um, B-copter. And one nice thing you can do with artilleries, although his lander is not in the correct spot for it, is you can move the... Uh, lander and drop it into this little pocket here. And then it can shell anything that captures your comm tower. Or you can move it, I guess, onto this uh, island area. So the shoal area. So that works too. Although it's a little bit late for that. And then Go kind of like pulls the trigger here, like sees the B-copter, sees the mech on the mountain and decides to go in with the B-copter and like now he knows literally everything about the front. I mean, he sees double mech. He says he sees where the B copter was, the the artillery, and the only thing he doesn't know is if there's like a tank hiding in one of these woods. I guess this wood. It would have to be here. So yeah, um, this basically gives him full information. And because of the double com towers, it, he hits like an absolute tank at one thirty attack.
And then he decides to follow up with the tank to kill off the uh to kill off the mech. Um maybe slightly less optimal in time in terms of like raw damage, but maybe you're just thinking like I need to trade evenly because I see all his stuff and he doesn't have a lot of stuff. And you know, if you're trading evenly over here, you're not losing your comm tower, so he maybe he's just thinking, just trade and then make the kill and then it'll be good. And also he has one ten defense, so this this attack also just kind of tickles, which I didn't account for. <laughs> okay, and then he just resigns. <laughs> yeah, it's rough. So I think maybe the main consideration uh trying to figure this one out is just like how can Javier, like, it's possible to cheese both of Javier's towers. What can he do to get at least one and just, like, guarantee get get a tower? Um, or else, if he can't do that, then he's not a good pick on the map. Um, so, yeah, that was great. And then, like, just absolutely wonderful game plan by Go7, uh, thinking about the best way to pressure that front, you know, overrun the tower side, hide his hand a little bit, um, and then, like, strike decisively when he sees that it's, you know, time to turn on the jets. So, yeah, that was a really cool game. Uh, sorry, DJs, I'll, sh I'll show a win for you next time. <laughs> okay. All right, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. That was the last of this round of the Global League Review. So, yeah, I mean, there's more stuff coming out uh, soonish, probably, I think. Um, so yeah, tune in for that. I'll see you guys later. Bye.